Jesus' name, amen. All right, now for Sunday School for this month, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to have a series that I'll be teaching during Sunday School Hour, and I alluded to it on Wednesday night. Uh, it'll be about the spooky cults. Now, this is a time of season where we see a lot of occultic activity and um, dealings and teachings about the dead, and uh, it's Halloween season, and so we're going to be talking about some of the spooky cults. Now, a cult in the definition would be those that claim to be Christian, but they have a problem with Jesus, okay? And I know there's multiple definitions, but that's the Christian definition, if you will. There are many so-called Christian cults that will try to present themselves as Christians, but they are not. Uh, one instance, a few years ago, I ran into some Jehovah's Witnesses on our block, and, and I, I, I pulled up, I said, hey, are you guys Christians? And they said, yes, we are. And I said, oh, really? You're a born-again, Bible-believing uh, Christian? You believe Jesus is God? And they said, well, no, hold on a minute. No, no, we're, we're, we're. and then all of a sudden they start backpedaling and they represent themselves differently. So it, it's no wonder that Satan wants to disguise himself and pretend to be something else. If you would, go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Uh, as we've been talking about last month, as we talked about the spiritual growth and uh, scriptural growth, understanding the Bible, why we have a Bible that is perfect, how God can preserve it. I mean, just the amazing technology in one flower is greater than any computer. And what He does with His Word is just as awesome. That God has written us a letter, and in it is a you know, Bible, B-I-B-L-E, Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. And in this book, it answers everything, absolutely everything. And we can have great confidence that God has preserved it, and it's perfect, and it's for us. Now, right in the beginning, of course, uh, Satan attacks verse number 1 through all the false Bible versions. By the time we get to chapter 3, you see the devil manifest in that serpent. He says, Yea, hath God said. That's the first words from the devil. And he says, Well, you say God says this, but did he really say that? Now, how many of you have had a child that you say one thing and they uh, kind of really strain at the words and don't do the essence of what you're saying, the letter of the law versus the spirit? Uh, I'm going to use Brother Doug as an example. He was telling us last week... Um, one of his children, he said, go see if there's a hairbrush in the bathroom. And the child goes to the bathroom and comes back and says, yes. <laughs> so, well, where's the hairbrush? Well, it's on the sink in the bathroom. Well, well, go get the hairbrush. Like, that's what I meant. That's what I'm telling you, right? So, uh, Satan wants to take what God says and say, is that really what he meant? Or isn't this allowed? Or let's twist the Word of God and manipulate it and change it and modify it. So for this series in October uh, of spooky cults, I want to start in 1 Timothy 4. If you're there, join me in verse number 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. In the end times, we're going to see a bunch of cults come around, and it's really doctrines of devils. It's a lying, deceiving spirit. Look at verse 2. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Now, most of your occults, they know what they're doing. They're hypocritical, and they're speaking lies. And today, I want to talk about those that have a seared conscience. Now, you think about the, the, the word conscience. We have the Holy Spirit. You're born again. God's Spirit lives inside of you. And He speaks to you in a still, small voice. We often call that our own conscience. Uh, Brother Roy and I was talking. Like He says, God talks to me. And I'm like, well, amen. He does me too. But it's not like the clouds open up and a light comes down and I see a body manifested. No, no. When I'm praying to God and I'm asking for His help and I'm praying in the Holy Spirit, and I say, Lord, should I do this? Oftentimes, in that still, small voice, almost like my own little voice, but I know it's the Lord. I get these little answers from the Lord. Like, and it's like, I know what to do, and the conscience is there, and the Holy Spirit works with that. So He bears witness with, with our own conscience. Well, there are those that want to sear their conscience. They don't want to feel anything when they do evil. Today we're going to specifically talk about a satanic ecumenical movement. Now, ecumenical is bringing all the religions together into one. And it's called Freemasonry. 
We're going to talk about Freemasonry, which is a cult. It was started in 1717, they say, although they also say that they were started thousands of years earlier. Um, they, now, I have to warn you, not every person that's part of the Masonic Lodge bows down to a statue of Satan or does sacrifices in the groves or some of the more bizarre things that they do, drinking blood and all that kind of stuff. Not everyone that says, I'm part of a Mason, they understand all of that. But I do believe, however, that some of those, they must understand that there's another level of wickedness going on inside of that lodge and that darkness, and it's filled with deceit, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared. Now, Satan is the father of lies, and he wants you to doubt the Word of God, and he wants you to live your own way. Freemasonry, at a real general level, they deny the creation account. They do not believe that God created everything in six literal days. They do not believe that the God of the Bible is literally your creator and your judge and your savior. They deny the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. They deny the preservation and inspiration of scriptures. Uh, that's a, a subject in and of itself. They are tied to many different esoteric cults. Esoteric means hidden knowledge. I don't want to expose you to the depths of Satan. The Bible does warn us there are certain things that they do in secret that we should not even speak about. I'm not going to give you the down and dirty and the nitty and the gritty, but I do want to connect some dots and I want to show you what they believe out of their own mouth and I want to contrast that to the Word of God because rather than me just tell you they're bad, I want to tell you what they're missing that's keeping them from being saved. Okay, So you could call this how to get a Freemason saved. Although I think when you get to the higher levels and they have seared their conscience, for many, they will not. Just as many of the Seventh-day Adventists, Jehovah's Witnesses, the Mormons, and many other cults. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. They're tied to the famously called the Illuminati, the Illumined Ones, the hidden knowledge. Um, they claim that Freemasonry is compatible with Jesus Christ or with Christianity. Again, as I give you this information, I want you to remember, you, maybe you're thinking, yeah, but I know my uncle, he's one of them, but he's not as bad as all of them. But listen, your uncle, he needs the Lord Jesus Christ. He needs to be saved like every other person. The gospel is for them specifically. I want you to understand this, okay? Uh, they claim oftentimes that it's not a religion, but now they're speaking lies and hypocrisy. And yet they do claim it is a religion. They'll, they'll speak out of both sides of the mouth depending on who's asking, how they're asking, and who's listening. Uh, they say they're just a friendly social club, many of them. They claim not to be satanic, although their founders write much about Satan and following him. Then they'll say there is no Satan. Then they say that Lucifer is inside of all of us and he's the God of truth. So there's these mixed things in some of their writings. They have multiple gods. They, they are a polytheistic god. They actually say Lucifer is a good spirit. Now, much like their counterpart, the Jesuits. Who knows anything about the Jesuits? Now, they're from the Catholics. Uh, today, they are in charge of all the printing presses, the propaganda, as it were. The Jesuits back in the day were known as assassins. They were the one that would come at night and uh, murder somebody. This is their history. The Jesuits are known because they would put a tattoo of Jesus on their chest and that they could speak of Jesus by searing their own conscience and thereby claiming to be Jesus. Okay, the Masons do the same thing by they speak of God. They'll say, God bless you, but they believe that they themselves have become a God by being one of the ascended masters and one of the illuminated ones. So they can use the name God very universally, and when we hear it, it's not the same thing, it's not the same God. This is very important. Just as with any cult, you have to define the terminology. If I say baptism, most of you know what I'm talking about, okay? We're going to have some baptisms in the next few weeks. We're going to have to tear the banner down and open up the baptism and turn the lights on and fill it up with water. And you're going to go under the water. That's immersion. Just as Christ was in the grave and as He resurrected, you come out of the water. Well, the Mormons see 
baptism as totally different, so do the Catholics and many others. Okay, so terminology is very important when you're dealing with somebody that believes differently and has a different God. So when they say God, they're oftentimes speaking of something completely different than what you're thinking of. Now with uh, the Masons that claim to be light bearers or illuminated ones, they claim also to have a relation, a tie to the Knights Templar. Who's heard of the Knights Templar? The Red Cross. It's literally, that's where the Red Cross comes from. Uh, listen to this definition. It says, the Knights Templar, full name, the United Religious, Military, and Masonic Order of the Temple and of St. John of Jerusalem, Palestine, Rhodes, and Malta, is a fraternal order affiliated with Freemasonry. They have many sections within, but the Knights Templar, a secret, satanic society that in history past were known for both sodomy and controlling the banking industry. That's where we get fractional reserve, where they promised out more money than they had in the bank. Um, unlike the initial degrees conferred in regular Masonic Lodge, which is in most Masonic jurisdictions, they only require a belief in a supreme being regardless of re religious affiliation. The Knights Templar is one of several additional Masonic orders in which membership is open only to Freemasons who profess a belief in the great architect of the universe. They try to appear Christian as much as they can. They try to appear as good people, which, hey, we ought to be good people, but we're not getting to heaven by being good people. Just as Adam and Eve, they covered themselves with aprons in the garden. By the way, if you're in the, there's an apron in the kitchen, that is not clothing, you're still naked. God came and put coats around them because when they had an apron on, they were still naked. Well, the Masons use that same symbol of an apron and they flip it when they're doing evil and they have light on the outside to show that they're doing good. They try to demonstrate their righteousness for eternal life through their good works. Um, if you think of the Mennonites or the Amish, not really a satanic secret society, but a deceived religion nonetheless. What do they have to do to go to heaven? Well, be a good person. Who's ever worked alongside or known a Mennonite or an Amish person? Boy, aren't they known for good work and their craftsmanship? Yeah, you better be if that's how you're getting to heaven, right, when you're trusting your own work. So the Masons oftentimes will pick leaders in the community, a good man, a hardworking guy, a business owner, and they say, joining us, will, it'll promote you and we'll take care of you and we'll protect you and the courts are in our back pocket. Uh, this is one of the biggest problems is the secrecy, which shouldn't be done in secret, right, and also the hidden power, the hidden hand of history. In Micah 6, he warns us about such an organization. It says, I'm sorry, Micah 7, that they may do evil with both hands earnestly. The prince asketh, and the judge asketh for a reward, and the great man, he uttereth his mischievous desire, so they wrap it up. He's talking about a court proceeding where a prominent person gets away with murder because of who he knows and who he pays off. Our court system ought to be righteous and it ought to be just, right? Well, we have a problem where maybe you get in a wreck and somebody hit you and they hurt you. But a guy, a, a lady, one of these people can walk into court and give a secret hand signal and all of a sudden the other lawyers and the judges and everybody says, well, we have to help them because one day if I'm in distress, I'm going to need help as well. Therefore, justice goes out the window and that is how Freemasonry operates. It's very important to understand. Masons are found at the top of many mainstream religions. Remember, it's ecumenical. That means bringing all religions together into one house. Now, that's not how God works. So their God is a false God. It is the devil. The B'nai B'nath, the, the, which is a Jewish Freemasonic, it's Kabbalism, the Kabbalists, that's what's in Hollywood. Uh, they have their Masan Masonic order. Uh, it means the sons of the covenant. They claim to be, uh, we, help, we help people and we're trying to spread the news. Muslims in Islam, they find their home within the Shriners International. Uh, you've probably seen those guys with the funny red hat and they drive funny cars or bikes. Um, it was formerly known as the ancient Arabic order of the nobles of the mystic shrine. The, they have a Quran when you go into their lodge. So the Masons are gladly bringing in many religions with many gods because they don't believe in the one true 
living God. Uh, let me share with you also that not all Baptists are Christians. In fact, some Baptists are Masons also. This is an article from the Tampa Bay Times from March 27, 1993. It reads, although many of the teachings of the Masonic Lodge are not compatible with Southern Baptist beliefs, it should be left up to individual Baptists about whether to join the secret society, a new report said Wednesday. The report, which makes recommendations based on a 110-page study done by the denomination's home mission board here, was requested by messengers or delegates to a national meeting of the Southern Baptist Convention last June. They said, hey, we need to do a report. Many of us are already Masons. You say we can't be. We need to talk about it. They did a 110-page report, and here's the findings. The report, mixed, the report mixed praise of Masonic charitable works with criticism of Masonic teachings that it says conflict with Christianity. In criticizing some of the teachings of Freemasonry, while leaving the decision on joining or not up to individuals, the report could be head of a potentially bitter battle between supporters and critics of Freemasonry within the 15.2 million member church body. So they're saying, hey, if you want to be a Mason, that's up to you. We're not going to talk about it anymore. And here's a quote from the report. In light of the fact that many tenets and teachings of Freemasonry are not compatible with Christianity and Southern Baptist doctrine, while others are compatible, we therefore recommend that, that consistent with our denomination's deep convictions regarding the priesthood of the believer and the autonomy of the local church, membership in a Masonic order be a matter of personal conscience, the report said. So they're saying, hey, if you want to go do that, that's fine. We're not going to talk about it. There are estimated to be 3.5 million Masons in the, in the United States, including an estimated 1.3 million Southern Baptists. Somebody help me do the math on that. Now, this is from 93. And by the way, the Masons are publicly recruiting today, publicly advertising. If there's 3.5 million Masons reported, and they say that 1.3 million of them are already Southern Baptists, if the Masons had a home in America, and they're telling us that over a third of them are in the Southern Baptist Church. Do you guys understand why we're independent Baptists? You understand the importance of the local church makes the decisions? Because what they do is they institute people that have ties to a false god, and they can read the Bible, and they can quote a sermon, and they can get up and tell you some things that may sound right, but the Spirit of God is not in them. They're deceivers and liars, and this is how the Masons operate. Just like the Bavarian Illuminati started by Adam Weishaupt in 1776, that was designed to infiltrate many other builders' guilds and organizations and social clubs, so that through that, they can gain influence over companies and nations, governments, and cities. And so they have. Now they've taken over in churches. Southern Baptist, unfortunately, is the majority of the Christian Masons in America. So not everybody that says, oh, I'm a Baptist, gets a, gets a free pass. I still ask people, when we go out and knock, knock doors and preach the gospel, oh, I'm good, I'm a Baptist. I say, well, great, well, more important than that, are you 100% sure you are going to heaven? And then I ask them, what do you think you have to do to go to heaven? And it's no wonder that the majority of the Southern Baptists would say, well, just be a good person and try not to steal from people and be kind and don't say any harsh words and do good deeds. And it's like, yeah, um, I think that's the same doctrine as the Masons as they trust in themselves for eternal life. We cannot trust in ourselves. The, the report continues, it says, the Southern Baptist Convention is the nation's largest, largest Protestant denomination. Its study on Masonic teachings was ur urged by Larry Holly, a Texas doctor and longtime critic of the Masons. The report and its recommendations was approved by the Home Mission Board trustees with just one negative vote. Holly told Associated Baptist Press after the vote that he would not push for further action this year at the Baptist June meeting. And in a prepared statement, Holly said, while this statement is not as I would have made it, it offers little secure for the Southern Baptist, that's help, it offers little help or assistance, if you will, for the Southern Baptist pastors, deacons, and laymen 
who are Masons. This board member, this guy knew that there were already pastors in the Southern Baptist Church that were also part of a secret society. He knew that they were Masons. He, but he also called it the weakest response in any Christian group to Freemasonry. In the United States, the Masonic movement is organized into 51 independent Grand Lodges. So uh, it's interesting that this is publicly printed in 93. That's 30 years ago. They said a third of the Southern Baptist Convention was already a Mason, and they knew that many of their pastors and deacons and laymen were also Freemasons. You say, what's the problem? Well, they have a different God. If you would go to Isaiah 14, please. They teach a different doctrine. They teach doctrines of devils is what we were warned about. Doctrines of devils. Having their conscience seared, they say one thing and then they do another. They secretly teach something that they won't teach in public. Um, we should not hide our doctrine. It ought to be public. You ought to be able to come to me and get the same answer that I would say to anybody else. Isn't that the truth? Isn't that how God operates? Isn't that how Jesus is? Hey, we, we, we shine the truth. Hide it under a bushel? No, <laughs> I'm going to let it shine. Make no mistake, Freemasonry is a polytheistic religion. Many gods. Even the state of California has ruled that it is a religion. The IRS has a special tax-free designation for Masonic lodges also. They have a false trinity of three separate gods, which is totally different from what the Bible teaches, that there are three that are one. The Father, Son, and the Spirit represents one, just as you have a body, soul, and a spirit. That false god, by name, they call Jabulon. Jah, which is Jehovah, Baal, which is Satan, and On, which is Osiris, or the Egyptian god of death and rebirth. Now, they have a god of death, they have Baal, and they have, Je and they have Jehovah together, and they say, these three gods make up our one god. And yet they allow for many other gods. They teach that the devil uh, is not necessarily evil and that you can become a god. Now, what does the Bible say in Isaiah 14, look at verse number 12. Isaiah 14, verse number 12, it says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, the son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? Lucifer was the name of the devil. He was a covering cherub, it says in Ezekiel 28. He was over the Lord's train until he was lifted up with pride and he fell. He was rebellious. So he lost that title of Lucifer and he was demoted to Satan, which means adversary. Look at verse 13. How did he fall? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. I will be like the Most High. He's saying, I'll be a God too. Isn't that what He did in the Garden of Eden? You shall be gods. Isn't that what He did? The lie that has been ever since the beginning? You can be just like God. You yourself can be the judge of good and evil. Take a bite of the tree of good and evil, right, of the knowledge of it. And now they understood the knowledge of good because God created good and said it was good, but He said, don't take of that fruit because then you'll have the knowledge of evil, which is harm. And He says, don't do that. You're going to regret it. And they did. And that was Satan's plan all along, to introduce evil to the human race. Albert Pike wrote a book called Morals and Dogma, which is essentially the handbook for Freemasonry. If it's a religion, that's their Bible, hands down. That is their number one reference. He's the number one referred. When you become one, they give you a copy. They tell you, read him, and you'll understand the religion. In it, here's a quote from him. He says, the true name of Satan, the Kabbalists say, again, Kabbalism, the Cabal, which is a secret group, that is a tying religion that brings in Eastern mysticism, Judaism, the Jesuits, Islam. Every false religion can be tied in through that esoteric religion. They all fall under that same veil. So he says, the true name of Satan, the Kabbalists say, is that of Yahweh, Reverse. Now here's the problem. Yahweh, Yahweh, is that what your Bible reads? I want you to understand something. What is God's name in the Old Testament? Somebody tell me. 
Jehovah. When they put forth Yah, they, that is a different God. That is not the God of the Bible. That's not how it's pronounced. It wasn't until the late 1800s that several Freemasonic rabbis decided to reinvent the language of Hebrew. It was a dead language for 2,000 years, and they were from Ukraine, Germany, and they spoke Yiddish. And they said, we're going to reinvent the language, and we're going to call him Yahweh, not Jehovah. Man, you say, well, the letter J didn't exist. The letter J has always existed. That sound has always existed. The vowel points were unknown and lost because the language was dead and unspoken. Well, they came up with a different name for their different God. He continues, he reads, It is Yahweh reversed. For Satan is not a black God, nor the neg negation of, he, for Satan is not a black God, but the negation of God. He says, What is Satan? negate or cancel God. There is no God. That's the essence of Satanism. And every Satanist would tell you that today. The devil is the personification of atheism or idolatry. Guys, understand this. When somebody says there is no God, what are they doing? They're making themselves an idol. They're saying, do whatever you want. Id idolism, atheism, is truly Satanism because that was Satan's teaching. The doctrines of devils, do whatever you want. Don't do what Jesus says. He says, for the initiates, this is not a person, but a force. We call it a spirit or a demon, right? The Bible calls them devils. This is not a person, but a force created for good, but which may serve for evil. It is the instrument of liberty or free will. They represent this force, which presides over the physical generation under the mythological and horned form of the god Pan, half goat, half man. Thence came the he-goat of the Sabbat, brother of the ancient serpent, and the light bearer, or phosphor, of which the poets have made the false Lucifer of legend. So what they're saying, the Freemasons say, hey, listen, you've got it all wrong. We have the truth. We know the secrets that Lucifer was the good one, and you can use evil for good. Now, doesn't the Bible say, shall we do evil that good may bound? God forbid, right? We don't just say, well, you know what? My sins are covered. Why don't I continue in sin? He says, God forbid, right? We don't want to go and hurt people because our sins are forgiven. They, on the other hand, say, well, we have to hurt to do, to do good. This is called dualism in other religions. You'll see it represented by a checkered board. And they have an apron covering their righteousness. When they put forth the white apron that shows the all-seeing eye, they're doing good publicly, and you can take my picture. And then the lights go out, and everybody goes home, and they have a black apron on the other side, and they do all manner of perversion and wickedness. This is the truth, the darkness of the light that's in Freemasonry. And here's the problem. Jesus is God. Amen. Did you guys see the sign out there today? Jesus is God. Freemasonry is missing this. You say, how can I get a Freemason saved? I know somebody and they're in it and I know they're not a terrible person and I don't think they're doing all that weird molestation and abuse and kidnapping and drinking blood and worshiping the Satan and praying to all that. I don't think they're doing that. How do I reach them? Well, you need to help them to see that Jesus alone is God. There are not multiple gods. There's one God. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you reject Him, you will end up in hell. Another quote, Masonry does teach that Jesus Christ was merely a man. Concerning the de denial of Christ's deity, we, have, we may note the observations of Masonic leader Jim Shaw. Shaw was a 33 degree Mason, a past worshipful master. That's what they call their leader, worshipful master. Can you imagine coming into church and calling the preacher worshipful master? Don't worship me. I'm not your master. I'm your servant. That's what preacher means. That's what minister means. I'm here to serve you, right? He was the past worshipful master of the Blue Lodge, past master of all Scottish Rite bodies, and a knight commander of the Court of Honor. He acknowledges that official Masonic doctrine maintains, and here's the quote from this man, Jesus was just a man. He was one of the exemplars, one of the great men of the past, but not divine, and certainly not the, one, the only means of redemption of lost mankind. What's he teaching? You can save yourself you can be a God. You can be an ascended master. You can be an enlightened one. You can be better than everybody else. Hey, a superman. If you haven't noticed, this sort of doctrine has found its way into almost every cartoon. 
And not all cartoons are bad, but many of the superheroes are half man, half animal, hybrid. There's some sort of a satanic mixture that goes on that really goes against nature that God teaches, things that are physically impossible. And in our curiosity and wild imagination, we say, oh, that's neat. A guy got bit by a spider, and now he has power, and he can move around and stuff. And it's like, well, that's Satanism. And they're exposing you to supernatural powers, a superman that won't die. Hey, we have a superman. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. He was the God-man. And he's not dead. He is alive. The Masonic Monday-Thursday ritual of the chapter of the Rosy, the Rosy Cross creates officially, we meet this day to commemorate the death of Jesus, not as the inspired or divine, for this is not for us to decide. One Mason told us, Jesus and Krishna are the same. What they're doing is they're blending all the religions. They want everybody to come together. Now, the, there's several arms of Freemasonry. Uh, for children, they have the Demolay Boys. Bill Clinton was one of those. They have Skull and Bones. George Bush and George Bush Sr. were both one of those. They have the Rainbow Girls. They have Job's Daughters. They have many things that they reach out to try to get children and women involved. The Women's is called the Eastern Star, the Order of the Eastern Star. Who's ever seen their sign? What's on their sign? What kind of star? An upside down star, a pentagram, a Satan star, if you will. Their symbol is also a hexagram. That's the six pointed star to put a hex. That's a magical term to put a hex on people. They use a hexagram. If you would go to John 20, go to John chapter 20. Uh, one more quote from this Albert Pike. He says, In his spiritual darkness or ignorance, the Christian Mason may choose to believe that Jesus was God and Savior of the world. But this is not Masonic truth. Those who consider themselves enlightened Masons hope that their unenlightened Christian brethren will realize that all specific dogmas about Christ are in error. Everything's wrong, but we have the truth, right? Um, Masons are hoped to strip all religions from their orthodox tenets, legends, allegories, and dogmas. This is why Masonic scholar Albert Pike asserts that Jesus was a great teacher of morality, but no more. Listen, if Jesus was just a good teacher, as the Muslims teach, but He was not God, and He didn't have the power to forgive sins, He didn't resurrect the dead, then we've got a problem. He was God. He is God. He is our Savior. He's the only name that saves. Amen. Masons that reject Jesus as God will Go to hell for unbelief. Let me give you a few verses. If you want to write some of these down, I'll give you the reference, but this is super important. How do we get a Mason to see the truth? Well, we tell them it starts here. There are many verses they'll point to. Instead of going that route this morning, I just want to shine the light of the truth that Jesus is God. The angel said Jesus is God in Matthew 1.23. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Who was Jesus? God with us. The Father himself said that Jesus is God in Hebrews 1.8. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. God the Father said to the Son, You're the King, you're God, you're forever. How about the disciple John? In John 1.1, 1, 1, he said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. There are many verses about Jesus being our Creator. This is one of the most famous. He is God, and He is our Creator. The disciple John also said, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost. These three are one. There is only one God. The three comprise the one. How about Stephen the martyr? In Acts 5, 7 it says, And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He saw heaven opened, and he sees the Lord Jesus Christ standing up. And he calls upon God and says, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. What's the name of God according to the Bible? Jesus. How about Paul the Apostle? 
Paul the Apostle in 1 Timothy 3.16, and without controversy is great, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. He was God manifest in the flesh, was the Lord Jesus Christ. Another thing Paul said was he was the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That was Jesus. He said, and he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Why? Because he is God. How about Isaiah the prophet? He called him the mighty God. Now we're going to look at doubting Thomas. You guys are in, in John 20, find verse 27. This is doubting Thomas's great profession of faith of Jesus' deity. Look at verse number 27. Then he said to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. When Jesus said, don't be faithless, believe me, his answer to belief was, my Lord and my God, he believed that Jesus was God. Look at the next verse. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. That's you. That's us. We get a special blessing because we haven't seen Jesus. We haven't seen God and yet we believe that He is, and we have great blessings for believing that. Go back just a few pages to John 8, and we'll stop right here. I want you to see this. In many places, Jesus Himself claimed to be God. John 3 is a famous one where He said that He says, No man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Jesus said, I'm here, I've been up there, I go back and forth, and I'm there right now. Why? Because God is omnipresent, He's everywhere. God is omniscient, He knows all things. You're in John 8, if you would, find verse 23. And He said unto them, Ye are from beneath, we're made of the dirt, right? I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins, for if ye believe not that I am He, ye shall die in your sins." One of the famous I am statements that Jesus made. In the beginning, back in the Old Testament, God represented Himself. Who should I say sent me, Moses? said, say that I am, which means I am. I've always existed. I'm the one that's eternal. And He says, and here Jesus comes in with all these I am statements, I am statements. And He says, if you don't believe that I'm God, you will die in your sins. He tells us that Jesus came into the world. He is the true light, capital letters, because that's His title. He is the light that lighteth all men. The Freemasons, they have a light they claim. It's Lucifer. It's a dark light. Jesus Christ is the true light that lighteth all men. And yet men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. I thank God that He paid for the sins of every Freemason and everybody in the world and He freely offers the gift. He says, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Mason or the JW or the Mormon or the Muslim that will not admit that Jesus is Lord, that He's the God, they will die in their sins and go to hell. If you know somebody that's involved in Freemason, Freemasonry, I would encourage you to warn them, to warn them that there's one God and it's Jesus that will judge them at the end. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank You for Your Word. Lord, thank You for having compassion on us. Lord, we are sinful people, and You love us while we were yet sinners. You died for us. Lord, I love You, and I pray that this information would help us to be stronger Christians and stand for the truth and the true light, the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask this in Your name. Amen.